Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we'll go through rocket immunoelectrophoresis. So let's get started. So moving to the principle and this procedure will cover the objective that we have, which is to learn the technique of rocket immunoelectrophoresis or RIEB. So moving on with so rocket immunoelectrophoresis is also known as electroimmunodiffusion, which is a simple, quick and reproducible method for determining the concentration of antigen in an unknown sample. So like any other immunodiffusion technique, it is also a technique for determining the concentration of antigen in an unknown sample. So various concentration of antigens are loaded side by side in a circular well along the edge of agarose gel that contains a specific antibody. So I'll just give you a small brief uh, pictorial view how it would look like before showing the real time view. So let's say this is a plate which contains the gel made from agarose and which has the antibody or anti seda in it. So when the gel is prepared, we'll punch in holes at the bottom of the gel like these in which we'll pour in the antigens. So as we pour in the antigens, we will run the electrophoresis in which these antigens will move towards the anode when they are uh, applied with current. So these particular antigens travel to the anode as they electrophorase and these will give us a view of a rocket like figures like these. So the, I'll give you a real time picture as well in which you'll have a clearer idea. So on electrophoresis, the antigen begins to migrate towards the anode and interacts with antibody molecules to form a soluble antigen-antibody complex. So however, as the sample electrophorase further through the gel, more antibody molecules are encountered that interact with antigen and when the equivalence point is reached, the antigen-antibody complex precipitates or a line is seen in the form of a rocket. So as they reach to the utmost point, it results in the formation of a precipitate line. So as they travel towards the anode and as they reach to a threshold point, it represents in the form of a rocket or a line or we call as it a precipitate line. So, so higher the antigen loaded in the well, farther the antigen will travel through the gel. So it's very simple as, as we know, this is a gel and these are the wells for antigens. So farther these will travel more the antigens of more the concentration of a particular antigen so this is how in this we can say this particular antigen has the highest concentration so this can be also found with the help of of a graph in which we will plot the x and the y axis and with the help of a standard curve will plot the uh, will get to know the uh, concentration of an antigen of an unknown sample so hence the increasing antigen concentration, a series of rockets of increasing heights are seen that is proportional to amount of antigen in the well. So therefore a direct measurement of the height of rocket will reflect on the antigen concentration. Also a standard graph as I said of antigen concentration versus peak height is then constructed from the and from the peak height of unknown sample concentration of antigen is determined. So I'll show you how it's done entirely in this video with that. So this is a real time picture how it looks like. So it, this is a particular gel. It's an agarose gel in which we have the antibodies in it already. And, and in the bottom of the gel, we have all the wells drawn here with the help of our gel plunger and in which we'll pour in the antigens. So as we pour in the antigens, the antigens will displace towards the anode as, as in where they are electrophoresed and supplied with current. So you can see as they reach to the threshold point or the equivalence point, they result in the formation of precipitating line or these lines you can see. So these lines indicate the concentration of these antigens. So this has the highest concentration whereas this has the lowest concentration. And, we, and by this way, we can find the concentration of unknown sample as well by plotting a graph again by the antigen concentration, known antigen concentration versus the peak height. So I'll show you how it's so let's just come to the kit description how what it what a lot consists of. So in this kit a standard antigen is supplied at four different concentrations 
along with two different concentration of test antigens. So, so at this point of time, we'll have many holes or many wells dug in here in which we'll have most of the known concentration antigens and some of the unknown concentration of antigens as well. So the test antigens are the unknown ones, whereas the standard antigens are the known ones, like with concentration of 0.125 and like these. So these will be electrophorized on an agarose gel containing the antiserum, as said before, and observe for the formation of rockets. So these precipitating lines which are formed after electrophoresis on a gel are also known as rockets. So that is why it is named as rocket electrophoresis. Also the concentration of antigen in the test sample will be determined from the standard graph of antigen concentration versus rock, rocket height. So as said before, so talking about the materials which are required or provided, which is the agarose, which is the most important ingredient. We need a buffer or the electrophoresis buffer under which the electrophoresis will be carried out. We need antiserum, for which is also a very important component, which we and then we need the standard antigens for our, for the graph purpose, for because we need the standard antigens to find out the unknown concentration of antigens. So this, uh, and this is the standard antigen. Uh, next, we have the test antigen, which is the unknown samples. So these, this is the one we need to find out with the help of standard antigens by plotting our standard curve. So moving on with this, uh, coming to the materials, uh, require some more materials required that are the glassware, conical flask, measuring cylinders, reagents such as alcohol, distilled water, and other requirements such as micropipette and tips. So some of the noteworthy note steps are reading the entire procedure before the starting the experiment, also reconstituting the antiserum vial by adding 5 ml of distilled water in case KT47 or KT47A. So these are the labeling of the particular antiserums and storing the antiserum at 4 degrees and use within 3 months and then reconstituting the antiserum vial by adding 10 ml of distilled water and storing them at 4 degrees again and this is the way we will do it. Also we have been to dilute required amount of 5x electrophoresis buffer to 1x with distilled water before using. So this is very important. Dilution is very important because electrophoresis need to, carry, need to be carried out at appropriate concentration. So the concentration will be maintained by the addition of buffer which will be reduced from 5x to 1x. So Standard antigens such as some of these uh, known concentration of antigens are provided at these concentrations and we have two unknown concentration of antigens as well. So use any one of them as per experiment as test sample. So we can use any one of them which will be sufficient to calculate the uh, concentration of that particular antigen. Also wipe the glass, uh, glass plate with alcohol thoroughly to make it grease free for even spreading of agarose and ensuring the high temperature of molten agarose is around 55 degrees so that the particular agarose melts and while adding the antiserum and higher the temperature will cause denaturation of the antiserum. So we need to wait as we pour in the agarose on the gel and to wait it to reach a temperature of 55 degrees Celsius or wait for the agarose to lower its temperature. We need to cool the agarose to 55 degrees and then add the antiserum. Because at higher temperatures, the antiserum might get denatured. Coming to the procedure, how it's carried out, which is very simple, which is preparing uh, agarose gel, which, uh, which starts with preparing 10 ml of agarose in 1x electrophoresis buffer by heating slowly till agarose dissolves completely. So in this case, in the first step, we'll prepare the agarose with the help of buffer. Then we'll allow the agarose to cool to 55 degrees Celsius as said before because in this case if the temperature is more the antiserum will be denatured. Also then the third step is addition of antiserum to 10 ml of agarose solution and mixing gently ensure uniform distribution of antiserum and then pour the mixture or pour the entire mixture onto a glass plate placed on the horizontal surface and allow it to solidify. So as we have added all the antiserum and made the gel and then we'll pour the entire thing into a glass plate and allow it to cool so that a particular gel is prepared. All right. So also we'll place the glass plate on a template holder provided and then, then we'll punch 
uh, some of the wells with the help of a plunger or a gel puncher uh, at the bottom of the gel for the addition of antigens and will place the glass plate, the entire thing in the electrophoresis tank to carry out the entire steps. So as we plunge the, uh, as we draw the wells or uh, make wells onto the gel, then we'll ship the entire particular gel in the electrophoresis tank and then we'll fill the electrophoresis tank with a buffer and then we'll put in the antigens and then start the entire so now you see coming to the eighth step which is filling the tank with 1x electrophoresis buffer till it covers the gel and then connecting the power core to the electrophoretic power supply according to the conventions so red is the anode and black is the cathode after we have connected everything so before starting with the electrophoresis sample or before giving some power supply to the electrophoresis tank will add the antigens so before giving a uh, starting the electrophoresis step actually will add the antigens all right so we will add 10 microliters each of the given standard antigens as well as the unknown concentration of antigens and then we'll start the electrophoresis at 100 volts till the rockets are visible or the die front reaches the edge so this generally takes one one to one and a half hours uh, electrophoresis can be continued for an additional 15 minutes after a dye has run out of gel to ensure better visibility of precipitation peaks. So after this electrophoresis has been done, we'll stop the electrophoresis and remove the glass plate from the electrophoresis tank. So with that, we'll observe the peaks that are formed or the rockets that are formed against a dark background. So we use a dark background for better observation and interpretation. So if the rockets are still not in clear, incubate the plate in a moist chamber at room temperature for one hour to overnight. So we'll keep it in a moist chamber if the rockets are still not visible. And after that, we'll measure the rocket height from the upper edge of a well to the tip of the rocket. So from, so let's say these are the rockets. So from the tip of the rocket to the bottom of the rocket. So this is how we'll measure the rocket a height of a rocket and then we'll construct a graph in which the height of the rocket will be kept at the y-axis so the height of the rocket is this at y-axis and antigen concentration will be kept at x-axis so antigen concentration is at x-axis and height of the rocket is at y-axis so with that we can get a kind of a graph like these let's say this is a graph and with and at this point, we'll draw a line to this. So as we get a line to this, from this point in time, we can help to get the concentration of unknown samples, which I'll be showing in the next slide. This would be like, let's say, let's take an example of this, which has four known samples and one unknown samples, which has standard concentration of these and which has rocket height of all these. So an unknown sample has a rocket height of 19 and rest of them has a rocket height of these. So this is a standard data that we have got. So this is how it would look like. So you can see, so this, we have plotted everything into this. So this is the antigen concentration at the X axis and rocket height at the, rocket height at the Y axis. So we have plotted everything. So we have plotted four points, which were of the known ones. So we have not plotted. So let's say we have not plotted the unknown concentration onto the graph. So we have plotted just the known concentration. So these are the four points. So this is the first point. This is the second point. This is the third point. This is the fourth point. Forget this line, this particular line. All right. So let's say this is the first, this is the second, this is the third and the fourth. So after we get these four lines, we draw a line corresponding to these four lines. So this is the line we got. You can see. So after we have plotted these four lines, now we'll plot the concentration of, or now we'll find the concentration of unknown sample. So we just have the rocket height in this case. So let's say this was the rocket height of 19. So the rocket height of unknown concentration was 19. So nine, from 19, we'll draw a line parallel to the line that we have got from the four uh, known concentration. So from here, we draw a line parallel to this. And accordingly, we'll draw again a vertical line parallel to this which will give us the concentration of antigen concentration of unknown sample. So from here, we'll draw a vertical line. In this case, the concentration of unknown sample is 0.26. So which corresponds to the uh, x-axis of antigen concentration. 
which is 0 0.26. Now it would look like, and from the graph, the height of 19 mm, so the height of 19 mm was of the unknown concentration, which corresponds to a concentration of 0 0.26. So by this, by first drawing, so this is how we look like. So 19 is here. So from here, we took a parallel line and then we took a vertical line according to the concentration, according to the height. So nine, according to 19, this would come to here. This is very, this will be very much vertical to this. And this correspond to 0 0.26. Come to the result from the standard curve, determine, determine, determination and report concentration of antigen in the test sample is done. So let's just keep this video till here. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do like, share and subscribe with your friends and thanks for watching.